first touchdown drive for you guys, um, and maybe what what did uh, you guys show by kind of overcoming a few things on that drive? I think there's a you know, third down, fourth down, kind mm-hmm. of things like that. Yeah, it was big. Um, just being able to find a way to move the chains, I feel like it, it helps you gain confidence, you know, for the rest of the game, knowing that you can do that. Um, and then also being able to convert down there in the red zone just to give confidence, like, all right, you know, we got that monkey off our back. Let's just go and keep keep doing it, really. No win doesn't solve everything, but how much it helped maybe change the mood around here uh, today? Yeah, I mean, it's always fun to win. It's not easy to win in this league. Um, feels a lot better winning than losing. I mean, that anybody can say that about anything. So I feel like it, it gives us a, a good opportunity to try to try to build this momentum and, and learn from what we did yesterday and try to keep it going forward. You guys are 4-0 at home, averaging 20-plus here, but 11 on the road. Is there something to just how things work at home for you guys as opposed to on the road? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I, did, I couldn't really put a name on it. I mean, if I were to guess, it's just like a, you know, just feeling comfortable here. Um, I feel like we, we know what to, what to do at home. I don't know what it is, but we got to find a way to do it again this week um, and then find a way to, to take it on the road finally. What do you think uh, happened in the second half yesterday where offense obviously wasn't the same as it was in the first half? Yeah, I mean, that that's just on us, really, to, to try to close that game out. That's something we got to improve on. Um, you know, that four-minute opportunity. I, obviously, you know, scoring in third quarter, uh, try to try to build that lead. But eventually, you know, once we got to that, that four-minute opportunity, I think that's something that we've normally uh, kind of hung our hat on and that we kind of missed the mark on yesterday. You talked about carrying confidence over after a win. When you guys have been successful here in the past, what does it take? to do that? What did it take to carry over that confidence? I think part of it is highlighting what we did well, um, fixing what we did that we didn't do well, but then also not getting too high on ourselves um, and not getting too low on, on, on the mistakes. I think it's just, I think we're best when we're kind of even keel and we know what we're doing. We, we know not to get too high or too low, um, but still celebrate what we do well. When you look at this league and, and and how dramatically things can shift. I mean, the Broncos gave up 70 to Miami, and they've won mm-hmm. five in a row. And, and you guys have seen dramatic shifts. How does that happen in this league? I think, you know, you see teams like that, and I, you know, I, I think with us too, it's it's like the, what is the, the phrase? You trust the process, right? You know, you keep going at it day after day. You might not see the results immediately, but eventually, like for the Broncos right now, now they're winning games. You know, they probably didn't feel super confident, you know, early on. Um, but it's just trusting that process, trusting that, you know, what we, we've done here in the past works. Um, and just believing in that and, and trusting the, the work that we're putting in. Is this still a confident team, in your opinion? I'd say so. I mean, we showed it yesterday in the, the plays that we had to make, we did make. Um, we ended up coming out with the win. So I, I don't think you can win a game without having confidence. Having another four of your last six at home where you're four and oh, how much does that perk your your, your confidence for the for the stretch run here that you guys can put together a run? Yeah, I mean there is confidence in that. You know, we know we haven't lost here at home. Um so I, I mean they say preparation builds confidence and I think we've prepared by winning here. Um so I, I think that's something we can hang our hat on it and you know continue to go forward. Specific as far as his own critiques of some misses that he had, specifically in the second half as, as a receiver. How nice is it to hear that, not only from your quarterback, but from a young quarterback? Is that self aware? Yeah, it's always good that, you know, someone can own up to, you know, mistakes or missed opportunities. Um, that's the nature of this business. I feel like part of being a pro is, you know, understanding where, where you miss the mark and trying to improve those things the first uh, Colts game and maybe what, what are some things that maybe need to change for you guys to have more success this time around? Yeah, I feel like looking back, I'm going to have to watch the film on that game again because you know, I'm really a, a, what is the, the goldfish mentality from Ted Lasso. Like, I forget about things really easily if, if it's not going to help me going forward. Um, but I think, uh, you know, the self-inflicted wounds, like the unforced errors, a lot of those things have showed up through the season that, that have held us back. Um, and then really just trying to take advantage of the big play opportunities. Um, I feel like we did do that well, and that's something we got to continue to do well against Indy. What did Wilson, you guys, maybe on the, uh, the drive right before the half, like in terms of efficiency, 
and getting you guys set up and, and, and getting the field goal off there. Yeah, that was a big uh, drive for us just to get you know an extra three points there. Um, it's something we work out or work on a lot. You know, at practice we worked on it. You know, throughout training camp, that pretty much that same exact situation. Um, we've done it through practice. You know, over the last you know ten weeks, eleven weeks, um, several times. So it's something we feel confident with. Nick, how do you uh, kind of evaluate Will week by week by week in regards to his seeing the field and finding the right guys? Yeah, I mean, it's not my job to evaluate him, but. Uh, you know, he's been doing well. Um, I think, you know, he's still learning. And, you know, that's part of the part of the process of being a rookie quarterback is still figuring out, you know, who's open and what coverage is going on. But I feel like he's going at it the right the right way and he's trusting the process and figuring it out. Have you seen Traylon around much and had a chance to, to visit and talk to him? Yeah, you know, I've talked to him a little bit. Um, seems to be doing better. Um, obviously, that's always a a tough deal uh, with those those head injuries. Um, so I don't really know much details, but at least in good spirits, you know, and I'm just, it's a blessing, you know, that he's all right, because that was a, that was a scary play. Nick, a lot of guys have talked about just building on on getting Elwin. Now that you've got that win, mm -hmm. how, how much confidence is in this room that you guys can build on that here in December? Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, we said earlier, you know, we feel confident at home for some reason, and, and it showed. Um, and we know we got a lot more of those home opportunities. Uh, so that's part of it. But also, uh, it's a familiar opponent. Um, and I think, you know, we, we feel like we, we owe them one also. I'm good. Are you aware during a game like that that they're suffering those injuries on the offensive line and that, that the people across from you are changing as frequently as they are? Or are you just kind of? Yeah, we saw, um, I think it was 62. That went went out earlier, um, and Nico and Jeff was the main ones who knew about it first, and then told everybody that 62 out, and I think 66 came in. Um, we didn't have much film about them, um, knowing about them, so we just went in and saw what we did on the field. You see Brave on a regular basis spending like one-on-one -on -one time with guys. I think he spent some time with you in practice last mm -hmm. week. What have you learned from him? Uh, what's he teaching in those moments, and how's he maybe been as a as a coach for you? Um, I, well, last week I can recall we was just talking about length um, on run 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 defense. Um, when the, when a guy come out and base you, um, I'm long, so he was just teaching me how to be longer, um, where I'm able to shed off blocks. Um, but Ray's always coming. If, he, if Ray's always coming in coaching, um, giving this two cents into whether it's pass rush, run stopping, anything dealing with outside linebacker. Because, I mean, he played it before, was successful at it. So if he see anything that's lacking from the OLB room, then he'll come and tell us. We see how they move you guys around. Like, you'll be inside and Jeff will be outside or mm -hmm. vice versa. Is that something that you know, comes out throughout the week? Or is yeah. it something like in the game, you're like, hey, look, I can take him? How it, does it, that work? It comes throughout the week. Um, I think we, we, we've – Given, we've been given the freedom to do that a lot more. That's just, that's why you see it a lot lately um, in the last three games. But that's something that we incorporate throughout the week, whether it's tackles out, ends inside, um, things of that sort. How do you personally build on what you were able to do yesterday? You had a big game in the season opener against New Orleans, then quiet for a little while, <clears> and then yesterday you had a big game. How do you build on that going forward and stack games? I mean, just throughout my career, my history, in November, December, AK come alive. So, I mean, it's, just, it's that time. It's the end of November, and we're coming into December. So, I mean, that's why I play my best ball at. Will said yesterday that he felt like this team needed to get their mojo back, some juice back, swagger back. Mm -hmm. What does this team need to do outside of just getting that win to get back in that rhythm. I mean, that's what we needed. We needed to get the win. No, win cures a lot of, a lot of things. Um, and us getting this win, it, it was, it was a great win. Especially us coming back home and then being on the road for three games, having to lose like that. Um, and the way we did, just coming out and get the win, which builds up the confidence. And we come in and uh, beat the coach, it builds more confidence for us. I take it you're never a guy who uh, needs to get his swagger back. You keep nah. his pretty much all the time. Nah, all the time. When you are in a slump, who who is it that gets you out of it? A slump, uh, just me, really. Be some because sometimes I do get in a slump, but you look at my past experiences, um, 
specifically just with football and how things going, especially this year. Um, I've been in this situation before and just go back and look at the experience that I went through and the things that I was doing, the things that I wasn't doing, that I could have been doing. You just go back and look at those things and then you just come in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday with a smile on your face and ready to work. You played pretty early, it seemed apparent like there was a big chance to go get the football there. Does that turn into a slow motion scenario for you as you're closing on him? Can you talk us through kind of what you see and when you know what's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's white. Sometimes you get white noise, uh, especially on that play. You can see the slow wind and just the ball movement. Um, that's why I came over top of him the way I did. Um, usually something to hit, hit the side arm or whatever the case may be. But it's just slow motion. When you come off the edge and you run and you know you got the sack. And then, uh, it's, unfortunately, he threw the ball and I got the sack fumble. Um, but that's just the way it went. That's the, the way the cards was played at that time. You were with Jacksonville last year and they were kind of giving up for dead at this time of the year and then went on a, an impressive run to make the playoffs. Do you preach any of that to these guys in this locker room? Here, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, when we d had those three losses, um, and everybody had they they inputs on different things. Uh, but for me, every time it was whether I was in Jacksonville or San Fran, when we went through those, we went back to the bases. We went back just like last week. We went back to the bases. We went to camp stuff. The things we ran in camp, we ran last week. Um, and the things in camp is what we know how to run. We know how to run those things. Um, and we played fast, as you saw last Sunday, just because everything was simple. I, I, saw you, okay. I saw you yesterday after the game, enjoying some time with the fans yeah. out there and all that. How, how, how much do you enjoy that part of it? And just how, how much have you enjoyed just sort of being in Nashville this year? Oh, I enjoy it. Because um, I know just, you know, growing up, I got a vet. It's gold. I know everybody can tell it a mile away. Um, but I know a lot of kids, a lot of fans just want to be around it, want to take pictures around it, want to do that. And even though we went out there and got the win, went out there and had a, a long game, I just feel like it's up to me to come out and show the fans and show Nashville. I'm a very loving guy. You know, you can read it on the social media and read it in the papers, but to get a handshake, to get a smile, to get a picture, to get an autograph from me, it'll go a long way. I said uh, yesterday that you know you can't win at home. You have to win your home games. What is behind that pride that that you have in making sure that you, you got to win at home? Nobody. It's just nobody. Just as a man, you won't allow another man to come in your house and take any anything in your house. Um, so it's it's like that with football. We win. We we got good great fans. They 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 care. They really care. They're really into it. Um, and I think it would be a disservice um, for us to not go out and play and go out there and try to get the win for our home fans at the home games. When you kind of look back to the first game against Indy, obviously they had a lot of success running the ball. Mm -hmm. What do you remember from that, and what can you guys correct to make sure that doesn't happen again? They beat us up. They ran the ball on us, um, and they beat us up. Um, and that, that, was, that, was the, that was the worst game. That's, I think that was the worst game we lost. Um, this year, but we owe them. You know, they're gonna come in and probably try to run the ball again, um, and they're gonna they're gonna be a team to test it and try to test it and run the ball. So it's up to us to stop the run so we can get to the pass. Was there yes. some added built motivation maybe, Arden, when when you know postseason doesn't look great for you guys, but if you're playing teams mm -hmm. that that are right in the thick of a playoff chase, maybe some added motivation to try and knock those teams off? Uh, I'm no, we ain't at that point yet. Uh, where we motivated to knock people out. I don't well, we still fighting um to get 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 to the playoffs. Um it is it's just the coach. It's the next game up. Um and we owe them. We owe them from the first time. So I don't think it's by playoffs or anything. They just we they, they beat us last game bad and we owe them this game. How much do you think this week you could get back in a get back in the hunt at five and seven? Oh, every week is is valuable. We gotta we gotta stack wins. Um, now now it's, it's a crucial time for us to stack wins. Win. We yeah, you can sit here and say yeah, we could we should win out seven games in a row. X Y and Z. We want that, but we want to stack wins. We, we we want more wins than losses. These last seven eight games. You brought up the car. How long you had it? Two years. Two years. 
You bring it with you from San Fran and Jacksonville or just Jacksonville? Jacksonville, yeah. From here. When you see Jeff chase Bryce Young from, from sideline to sideline and stay on the field, I mean, is that just leading by example? Because I'm, I didn't know how he was even going to get down in his stance on the next play. That's great. We just saw that play. Um, the outside linebacker was just watching it. Uh, it's just it's just amazing. I mean, that's that's what we preach. I mean, and then it's, he he's a professional. Um, he's a pro. Effort is what we teach, what we preach over here. Um, and in order to be a titan, you have to go out there and play with tremendous effort. And if you don't, then you won't be a titan. And I think he's just a, the the best. The best idol to look at if you want to be a Titan, you look at Jefferson. You obviously had a previous relationship with Rand, and I, I would imagine he played a big role in you coming here. What were some of the things that you know stood out to you about him and made you want to get reunited here in Nashville? Uh, just our relationships, um, just our relationship in San Fran and how he operated over there in San Fran. Everybody speak highly of him. Um, we had a relationship in San Fran, so it was just easy. Once he made the phone call, it was easy for me to pick up and say, what's up? How do you feel this organization has done as far as living up to the pitch that he and everyone else gave? gave? It's, it's been good. I think everybody's kept their word um, thus far, um, and I can't be more than happy than the decision I made. Uh, on the other side of the line of scrimmage, what do you see from the quarterback, uh, Will, and just how he kind of carries himself, maybe some of the confidence that he brings? Poise, poise, poise quarterback. Um, will take a hit, sit in there and take a hit. Um, can, de can de deliver the ball anywhere on the field. Um, smart, smart quarterback. He, he, and he becoming a leader. He the one broke us down, um, broke us down yesterday, um, coming out for the game. He broke us down, not Jeff, not – the older guys that been him as a rookie, um, and the things he said, he got us going. He definitely got us going, and he just he brought it back to us. He said, "In the, in this huddle, we see a lot of dogs, so go out there and play like a dog. No, no matter what everybody else saying or whatever, I see a lot of talent in this group. So let's go out there and play." Does that affect an edge rusher? Like you go get after a quarterback, you you hit some guys. You know you can see him get a little rattled, yeah. get want to escape. A yeah. guy like Will, who's willing to stand in there, take a hit, and is unfazed by it. Mm -hmm. How does that affect you during a game? Uh, it, it, it'll be very annoying as an edge rusher hitting the quarterback. He don't show any type of emotions, or he might. There's been times where he didn't got hit and looked at the guy. He looked he that hit him. So it's it's one of those. He just got that that mentality that. A dog mentality. <laughs> is you looking at him like, is that all you got kind of a look? Is that I, I, mean? I don't know. Maybe he's saying something or whatever, but it's one of those looks like you got to keep coming. <laughs> On the other side of that, Arden, what, what's your feeling when you're right behind the quarterback and about to hit him from behind and he clearly has no idea that you're right there? What's what's that feeling like? The ball. The ball. Because he don't, he, don't, he don't see it. I'm on the right side, the blind spot. And then on the play action type pass like it was, those routes are longer. That the, the play is more developing, um, longer routes. So if he 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 expects for the hold up to be a little longer, and he, him not expecting it, it's an easy 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 thing to get a, a sack from in those situations. I, I gotta imagine though, once you're right there, it's gotta be like I'm about to tee off. On yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I miss something like that too though. You got an opinion on who the Heisman Trophy winner ought to be? Dude, well, I'd be biased if I say guy from LSU. <laughs> Mike, nine rookies yesterday. How much is some of this youth maybe part of the penalty issues that have been going on, or is it just needing to uh, needing some guys to maybe clean up some things? Well, I guess you'd have to go through the penalties. And then I'd have to look and tell you whether they were a rookie or not. I haven't had a chance to do that yet. OK. Uh, are you seeing any common theme in some of the penalties? No, no. Uh, Jalen had a, you know, a false start. You know, we had a couple of those. We had three of those. Um, you know, that hurt us. And we have to use cadence as a weapon. You know, we're at home. Just as we have to be good on a silent count on the road, you know, we have to be able to use that as a weapon. Uh, especially on third down, whether that's to address some of the coverage uh, or some of the pressure that may come or even to get them to jump. And um, 
you know, we had three of those. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, tell you that, you know, one was tougher than the other or a guy blitzing and us flinching. And, you know, we just have to, you know, find a way to continue to, to use that as a weapon and, and, and not jump off sides and, and make it harder for ourselves than what, you know, this game already is. Jalen held up first start. Well, I think it was okay. I mean, I think that there were some good snaps. I think early, you know, got powered and needs to, to re replace his hands. And, you know, he settled down and, you know, I thought it did, a, did a nice job and, and, and had some good snaps. Um, you know, I think that he was conscious, you know, as we look at, you know, Derek maybe cutting back and a guy breaking the framework of his body and Jalen letting him go and not just, you know, tugging him right there at the – point of attack is something that we try to talk to those guys about where you know the offensive linemen may not know they don't know where the the running back is and you know they're just trying to block them and 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 stay square and get some movement and then as the back decides to you know to make his cut uh, wherever they're going that sometimes these guys shed and and you find a guy that you know there's some restriction at the point of attack and I you know I saw that Jalen you know let the guy go and Derek was able to to get the corner and and, and gain you know, 12 or, or 15 yards, um, you know, would have liked to have had a better block on the on the throw to Chig, you know, but Will made uh, a great throw uh, with pressure and, and Chig helped Will out. So that's kind of how it goes sometimes, you, you know, but I thought it was okay for, you know, for his, you know, first extended, you know, action. About how much of the time did you leave him single blocked in one-on-one -on -one situations yesterday, especially in pass pro? I mean, it just a lot of that is, um, you know, based on, you know, the, the third down distance protection. You know, I don't have a certain percentage. You know, it's based on, you know, formation and, you know, some of the first and second down stuff. And, you know, there were some there were some good pockets, you know, on some of the first and second down stuff, which, you know, maybe a, a few weeks earlier that had been, you know, where, where some of the breakdown had occurred on some of our play action game, you know, but there were some good pockets that, that we were able to throw the football from. And then there was some, you know, early on, the, maybe in the third down, they brought five guys and Will didn't have much, much time to, to do much. Story wise, you guys are at home, 24 points on the road is like 11. Is there anything that you could put your finger on to say like, why it's so different offensively? Um, I, you know, I don't want to say sit here and say that we've played good defenses, but I know that, you know, that's probably part of it. We, we have, I think, played good defenses. You look at the, you know, where the Saints were week one and, you know, I felt like that was a good defense and, you know, Pittsburgh on the road, you know, see the type of defense that they play and I, and that's probably, you know, being realistic. You know, we hit, we hit, we know that we have to be better right now. We're focused on you know, being better at home because that's where our next game is. Um, and then, you know, attacking those things and just the, the, the details and just how critical um, just a few things are when, you, when you're on the road and the noise and, you know, getting off on the, the snap count and all those different things that, that attribute to that. And, but right now our focus is, you know, preparing to win a division game at home. How real is that energy from the, the crowd that, that you guys experience? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, when we play hard and we play well and we play complimentary, I mean, I thought that there was, you know, uh, great energy. And I thought our, you know, defensively, the thing, you know, probably the most proud of and excited about was, you know, that we gave up some plays or we gave up a third down penalty or conversion or quarterback scramble and it came back and there was a long drive that had penalties on it uh, that we held them to a field goal and then responded after the second half scoring drive and then kind of kept battling and we got the turnover and you know some good, really good opportunities and, and cool things in there we just try to put it together for for 60 minutes about how meaningful it was for him to see will break it down in the huddle before the game when you see that or some of the other steps will's taken to be a leader as a rookie just what does it mean to you to see him take those steps well, I mean, we all know how important their quarterback position is in, in this league and in football. And, you know, part of that is, you know, performance based. But I think there's a there's a leadership element to it that that has to go on that, the, you know, everybody has to see that that player is invested and that players, you know, performing and and cares, um, you know, 
as much, if not more, than everybody else. Jeffrey chases Bryce Young from sideline to sideline and then stays on the field to rush the passer you know, the very next play. Is that something you, you show as kind of a teaching moment for your team, what, what the effort is, is all about? That's going to be, you know, I mean, that's, that's one of them. You know, those, those examples are, you know, there, there's, there's uh, quite a few of them. You know, and I think that, um, you know, it was, a, you know, every week is a challenge, and, and Bryce did a nice job. I thought, you know, we, we factored in the middle of the pocket yesterday, and, you know, we'll have to continue to try to contain those, you know, those quarterbacks that can scramble. Um, but, you know, Jeffrey works hard at his conditioning. He works hard to play a lot of snaps for us and to, uh, to help us impact the game. What's the coaching, uh, teaching been like with Chig, I guess, throughout the season as he's kind of tried to develop consistency and how much you hope? You know, yesterday is uh, maybe gives him a little bit of confidence to to keep playing well. Well, I love you know, I mean, I love Chig's energy, love what he can do. Um, I've continued to find ways to you know to get him the ball and some of the details, and he did a did a very nice job of slipping out of there yesterday. He was you know good on a check down, getting out of bounds, knowing that um, you know how he needed to get out of bounds, you know. Got in there and, and did a nice job on a seal block. We just couldn't get the safety. And, you know, so he's, again, fantastic to work with, fun to work with. And, you know, we'll continue to, to find ways to, to have him help us in the run game and, and in the pass game. How did you go for it on that the early fourth down there? And, and maybe that first drive in general, how important was it to kind of overcome a few different obstacles there on that, on that drive? I guess second drive. Yeah, I thought it was. Um, you know, just felt good about the call. Wanted to try to get it off the call sheet. Been on there for a little bit. So, um, you know, just felt like we needed a, to, to get going and needed a spark there. And, um, you know, guys converted. And then, you know, we're able to, like you said, go on and, and, and lead that to, to points. That's the most important thing, whether you, you know, fake a punt or you go for it on fourth down and you convert it. You know, you got you to gotta finish it off. In the last month, 3.5 yards a carry, 5.4 a catch. You kind of assess where he is right now it's compared to where, he, where he's been when he's kind of brought more explosive play? Yeah, I think that's just probably based on opportunity. We got to, you know, continue to find ways to, to get him some opportunities. I meant, you know, it's third and 12 late in the game. We could try to flip a screen out to him just – you know, take care of the football and, you know, third and five, we're going to try to win the game. I think third and 12, you're just trying to make sure that, you know, somebody doesn't, you know. So, again, I think a lot of that's opportunity. So, I'm, you know, um, break the tackle there on the corner and uh, and get some yards. And, you know, and we just – I think it's just about opportunity. He might tell him to get down, take a knee on that spike at the end of the half, or is that just – his, his inst is that how he's coached or that his instinct is to kind of take yeah it? just stop you know I mean you're going to be out you're going to be off the off the line of scrimmage and you know save your legs and not worry about running down there you're legal just you know it kind of again I thought that was very well executed I'm you know excited that we were able to put that on tape and uh, for everybody for the defense to get a stop for us to go down there offensively and uh Get the ball out of bounds, and then you know they took they called timeout, changed the defense. You know we were able to get Nick down to the 35. Everybody was running. Brew got the ball, got the spot. You know Tajay just figured might as well just stop and and be legal and and not worry about anything else. So I, I thought that was a very impressive play. Mike, there's nothing better than game reps for rookies. How do you feel like Will's done so far through five weeks in regards to taking what he learned from one Sunday into the following week? Well, I think he continues to improve. I think there's some snaps. I think we, you know, decisions and, and being able to see some things that, that, that come open or pop. And um, But I felt like, you know, I mean, early in the game, pretty efficient and, you know, got the ball out of his hand and, you know, found some matchups that he liked. Uh, I thought that, you know, got us going early there with Hop and, um, you know, the patience there to wait him out and uh, the accuracy. You know, just making sure that we're we're not putting the ball in harm's way. You know, a couple of layered throws. I'd like to see a better, you know, better football to Tajay. You know, we can't leave that much air underneath it, and 
and put him in harm and uh, put the ball in harm. You talk about complimentary football. Ryan still has set in as a record last year, but has he been consistently better this year with where he places the ball and specifically kind of those short yardage inside the 10? I think his ability to mix it up, I think he's worked on more pitches, you know, some different pitches. Um, high with some spin, you know, hook, directional, you know, and then when he's got to, you know, bring a driver out and, and bang it, you know, he's got that still in his bag. So, um, you know, I thought special teams was a little closer to what we expect. It wasn't perfect. That was a good unit. You know, they were averaging 34 yards a, a kickoff return. We know late in the season the ball is going to be in play. Uh, so uh, that was something that was a focal point. Uh, we were we were pretty good on our punt coverage. I was excited about the return that we had. Unfortunately, you know, AK just um, it got got a little. Uh, he's, you know, I mean, obviously he's supposed to stay on that you know upfield shoulder, and the guy 42 kind of crossed his face, and we tugged him. But uh, you know, it would have been cool to have that return. Um, you know, we thought we had a little bit more space. We had had the one kickoff return, but um, you know, the other one we just. You know, weren't quite good enough. I just I thought special teams wise, that was more along the lines of what we were looking like covering kickoffs um, for most of the day. Penalties in the secondary yesterday. Were you seeing common threads? Is is it more of a technique thing that you're seeing, or, or how do you evaluate that? I mean, you can't grab the guy, or you know, I mean, at the top of the route and grab him. There was some good examples of guys being square. Um, but you also, you know, you can't grab them and, you know, whether we think they are or not, they, they see it, you know. Thought probably one out of those were probably I disagreed with, but that's how it goes. Is that the Fulton one? What's that? Was that the Fulton one? No, probably the one SMB one on Thielen, but two-step process. I don't know if he looked back and saw the ball get thrown over here. I'm not sure. You guys can, can take care of Which the full one, no, he tackled. He, he was bear hugging the tight end. If, if you can take care of business with the Colts this weekend, do you feel like that gets you back in the fight, or is it still too early to say that? Yeah, we're looking to fight every week. I just, that's, you know, I don't, I, I think for us to look that far in advance, it uh, doesn't, you know, we, we got we to focus on this week. We got to focus on health here, recovery, improvement, you know, these little details, these techniques. Um, that, that I know that we can be better at, that we have to. Do you feel like you can put the, the same offensive line on the field for, for two weeks in a row after this week? And, and how much of an advancement is that for you guys to be able to do that? Uh, you know, again, I haven't met with Todd. I just, you know, guys, you know, going for different tests, seeing the doctors and, you know, and I, we'll have eight guys ready to go, ready to uh, execute the game plan. And, and we'll see where that is, you know, moving forward. Danico, uh, mm -hmm. you impressed how he just continues to just show got a lot up. of pride. I got a lot of respect for Danico. I just, uh, you know, his ascension from from a college player to undrafted, and you know, being you know going to Indy and then coming here and, and really maintaining that level of performance. Um, you know, got a lot of respect for him. It means a lot to him. Um, so enjoy coaching him. Enjoy being around him. And. You know, certainly factored yesterday uh, was a was a large part of our, you know, performance. How's the inside linebacker rotation there with Gibbons and Rice? How how's that? Is that predetermined which guys are going to play which series, or is it just kind of a feel thing as you go through the game? Well, I mean, I think it's tried to be predetermined and give them you know a couple of series um, each half, whether that be for for Gibby or or Aziz, and and kind of rotate through and you know then kind of see where it goes. I don't know what the word is. Frustrating. The, the I guess first three drives, second half, you start off with kind of a big chunk play, and weren't able to capitalize on it. Frustrating, disappointing, I guess. There. Yeah, we just have to. You know, some of them are penalties. Some of them are just um, mistakes, or you know, you know whether we you know don't get a guy blocked or. Yeah, I mean it's that's what's frustrating. You hit a twenty-some yard gain, hit a fifteen yarder, and then. You know, third and three, uh, fall start, or just, you know, don't have very effective plays 
following that up. Like, it's got to be, okay, on to the next one. Let's get into a drive. Let's get into a rhythm. Great drive starter. Um, and, and then just not stall. You worry about one week at a time, but how much can you point to, I guess, last year and how much the division changed from this point kind of on to show your guys that there's still a lot of football in front of you and a lot of things that can change? Yeah, I think there's probably some of that. You know, but we also got to sit there and you got to ride, you know, I mean, we, we got to ride our horse and we got to stay focused on us and, and just winning. And then that, that kind of takes care of everything else. And the motivation should be high to win um, and continue to improve. Did you get a chance to talk to Frank much yesterday? I and mean, I, I know you probably hate any time a head coach loses the job, but just kind of an example of, so you need to win in this league to keep your job? Uh, yeah, I talked to Frank. You know, I've known Frank for a few years. Got a lot of respect for him. Um, you know, I think every situation is is different. I don't know, um, you know, what why the decision was made. They made a decision, and but you know, a lot of respect for Frank, who he is as a person, and you know, who he is as a football coach, and you know, it's uh, yeah, we we know what uh, what we signed up for. Tennessee moved on from Rick Stockstill today after 18 years. I know he's been around here a bunch with, with KBs. Is he a guy you got to know well at all? Uh, just a little bit. You know, just the, those coaches around the area, you know, that come for OTAs and, you know, visit with us. And, you know, it's uh, made made a, quite of uh, impact here in, in Middle Tennessee and in, in coaching football. So, um you know, hopefully, you know, we'll we'll see him more going forward and based on where he goes on his next job. But it's always welcome here to, to come and watch practice. Both Nick and Arden, when they were up here, used the exact phrase, we owe them, meaning the Colts. Is that just kind of a consensus within the locker room? Was that a message you gave them yesterday or this morning? And can you tap into that at all this week as you prepare? Um, no, I don't think I can remember saying that we we owe them i mean we we have to come back and win a game in a division at home in, in indy you know against indy so um yeah i mean i don't i don't see there being you know anything owed like they beat us we didn't make enough plays they you know played better than we did that day and you know there'll be some things that we'll have to fix and i'm count i'm confident that uh you know, we'll be we'll be ready and we'll be prepared and and we'll play hard. In protocol, are you, are you hopeful that he can take another step and get back. On the I'm field? hopeful for a lot of things, Jim, but I'll just wait, you know, and see whenever the player, in this particular case, Traylon, uh, clears the protocol. Then we'll we'll practice with him. No different than if that was anybody else. Or hopeful that we get all our players back that aren't playing right now. So. Um, whatever that is, that that's what it'll be, and that's all I can say. Just because of that's how you're supposed to operate within the protocol. Sean, come out of it all right. Oh uh, yeah, I would. I would again. I want to reserve uh, the full diagnosis until I've had a chance to talk to Todd. But um, everything uh, coming out of that game last night or yesterday afternoon. Um, was was positive as far as how he was able to to make it through. Notice noticed you uh, chatting with Trace Atkins before the game. You spent much time around him. Did you realize he's that big and uh, you think he's a football fan? Well, I know he's a football fan. He is. Uh, he's he's a good man. Um, I've had a chance to meet him before. Um, good old deep voice and yeah, he's a he's a lunch pail guy. So. Um, I, I didn't even dawn on me that he was singing the national anthem until I walked out there. So had a chance to catch up with him.